This is a gouache painting that I did on Langton paper. I did this at the request of a painting society that asked me to specifically do a gouache demo for them because the people in the organization, they weren't familiar with the medium. And to be honest, I don't use gouache strictly by itself a whole lot. And as we get into the demo, I'll explain one of the reasons why. Uh, this was primed with acrylic orange. I really wanted to have a lot of contrast. I wanted to have a real warm underpainting that would shine through the greens and, and the other colors in the uh, painting as it went along. And it's, it's very strong and it's, it forces you as a painter to overcome that really strong glaring orange. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to handle, but it is a really good exercise to practice doing something like that where you work on a primed uh, canvas or a primed piece of paper that's got a really strong color signature because it will for it well one it unifies the whole painting because everything will have that color insinuated into it as it sort of glows through but you have to cover it enough where you don't wind up with just this really kind of ugly orange painting or an ugly pink painting or or whatever you've primed your uh, substrate with so that's part of the challenge right there now uh, I, and the acrylic is really very thin I didn't want to put it down so thick that it served as a substrate in and of itself it's really not that thick it's just put down so that it's sort of stained the paper I still wanted to excuse me I still wanted the paper to have a an absorbent quality to it and had I primed it so thickly that I had filled in the fibers of the paper, then the gouache would have just sat on top of it, which would have been okay. It wouldn't have hurt anything. It's just that it would have been very different. It wouldn't have reacted quite the same. Now, as you can see, I'm working. One of the things that I don't like about gouache is that of all the paints that I use, and I use uh, casein, I use acrylics, I use oils, and I use just straight watercolor. Of all of them, none of them changes color and value as markedly as gouache does. Gouache is just a really tough medium to, to work with because it will change values on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, say 1 being white and 10 being black, most colors are going to shift maybe 1, maybe 2 uh, steps in value so that if you put it down wet and it's an 8 so it's really dark, you can expect that it might dry to a 6. And if you put something down and it's uh, it's a two or a three so it's almost white then it could dry and go darker and maybe go from a two to a three or a four. A cr gouache doesn't do that. With gouache it might go from an eight to a five, four, even a three. I mean it just incredibly uh, different and how it will look from how you put it down. And I, I apologize, I hope you don't get confused with those numbers. I hope that, I just wanted to use it as an example to let you know that you can put down something that for you in gouache almost seems to be black in how dark it is. And then as it dries, it will literally dry three, four, five, shades lighter and going in the opposite direction the same thing you put it down very light and it can go three or four maybe even five shades darker 
which can be very off-putting and very difficult to judge your values and your colors as you're working. Now, I'm not bashing gouache at all. It is a wonderful medium that has some fantastic qualities to it. What I'm just trying to get across to you is that of all the paints you work with, they're all going to shift in some manner as they dry. That's just the nature of paint. But gouache is going to shift far more than any of the others. And you just have to be aware of that and you have to learn, you know, what, what it's going to do. Uh, because it, I, one of the things that I found so frustrating uh, with it, or do still find frustrating, is that I'll put something down, think it's right, come back and have to do it again and again until I get the, the value that I want. Whereas with other mediums like casein, oils, acrylics, watercolors, with all of them there is some shift, but you know, you can kind of get used to doing things a little lighter or a little darker. But the dramatic shifts are something that even I have to uh, kind of struggle with a little bit. Now, I will say the colors that I'm using, they're all M. Graham colors. That may or may not make a difference. Uh, I think I may have a Utrecht color in there too, but I, I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't discount the possibility that there could be uh, some inherent quality in M. Graham's and maybe Utrecht's colors that make the color shift a little more dramatic. So you might want to play and explore using other colors, Windsor Newton, Rembrandt, something like that, and see if they don't shift a little bit less. I know that as I use the colors, I will eventually try and, and see what the others do. What attracted me to the M. Graham, quite honestly, was that they were just cheaper. They were uh, a little bit less than some, but substantially less than some of the others. So if you're wanting to get into gouache and you're buying your first set, I would, I would strongly suggest M. Graham just because it's so much cheaper than some of the other brands. Now, um, let's talk about the positives with gouache. One of the wonderful things about gouache is the same thing that's so nice about casein and watercolor. It's so very transportable. You can take it really just about anywhere because all you need is water and you're set. You know, when you're carrying oils, then you've got all the smelly ingredients and they're you know, toxic and sometimes flammable. And so that can just impede your ability to travel with them. So a water medium like gouache is wonderful. Um, also, uh, gouache will mix w very happily with all of the other water-based colors. So if you're using uh, casein or watercolor, you are good to, good to go mixing them any way you want to. Also, lastly, you can actually mix them with acrylics. Now, of course, if you mix them with acrylics, then as soon as it dries, the acrylic in the mixture is going to uh, dry what's called closed, meaning it's no longer uh, permeable with water. But, um, you know, that's okay. It's just you have to be aware that if you do mix your gouache with a little bit of acrylic, it's going to dry closed and no longer be you're not going to be able to reconstitute it with water uh, but also you don't have to worry about with acrylics which I do love acrylics as well but if you take them out into the field you just have to be very vigilant with your brushes and keep them meticulously clean or it will you know of course they'll dry harden in your brush and, and ruin your brushes so that's that's uh, some of the positives with um, gouache is that it just plays well with others and it's eminently transportable anywhere. Now the other thing about gouache is that it is some of the most intensely beautiful colors that you're going to find. 
the richness and just the vibrance of the pigmentation in gouache is it's just I think superior to most of the other uh, colors I uh, I may be wrong but it just seemed to me that whenever I paint in gouache the the intensity of the colors is so much greater than with oils acrylics watercolor or casein but now one thing you and it's very opaque uh, that that's something else to keep in mind is that gouache is a very op opaque medium so you can go over things and uh, cover a lot of ground however this is really odd with gu with gouache and I had to just stumble onto it because nobody said anything about this but it goes down somewhat translucent not transparent but translucent and that you can see through it but as it gets or as it dries it becomes more and more opaque now I'll give you an example I uh, was working on a painting where I really need to needed to cover some colors that I'd already laid down with white and I mean I put down a ton of it and it was just completely translucent. I could see what was up under it. And I kept putting layer and putting a layer and putting a layer. And it just, it wasn't covering. And I thought, my goodness, this has terrible covering power. But I was already invested into the painting. So I, I moved over and started working in a different area. About five or ten minutes later, I came back. Oh my gosh, that area was just a solid block of white. I mean, just as opaque as it could be. And I was I was just really kind of taken aback. I wasn't expecting that. So uh, I purposely went into another area with the white, and I did a wash over it, this time not nearly as heavy. And again, I couldn't force it to go any more opaque it just it was it was what it was it was translucent and I could see up under it this time though I took the blow dryer and I hit it with a blow dryer and I watched as the color just went from translucent to completely opaque and totally covered up what I had intended it for it to do so I mean that's good I, it's really nice to have such a strongly opaque medium. It's just that it can be very off-putting and disconcerting when you're painting something and all of a sudden, you know, you're thinking, well, this just doesn't have any covering power, and so you're really struggling. And then all of a sudden you watch, and before your eyes, it becomes this really thick, opaque passage of paint. So that's sort of a positive and a negative all wrapped into one. Now on this painting, um, one thing you'll see a little bit later in the painting is I was working on the trees in the back and oh, I kind of fiddle fussed with them a little bit and wasn't sure quite what to do and you'll see that I wind up just going back over the a large section of it and repainting it. That's another positive with gouache is that even though you may have several layers of paint down, if you're a little careful, you can actually lay new layers down without lifting up. But you do have to be aware that if you fuss around with it very much, that you will be begin to pick up the layers below it. So... Uh, as a layering medium, it's not as good as acrylics, which are wonderful. You lay it down, and uh, if you want to glaze on top of it, all you have to do is just hit it with a blow dryer, let it be dry, and then glaze over it to your heart's content. And there's really no limit to how many layers you can do. With oils, of course, you can do that, but you have a long drying time. Now, with casein and watercolor, Again, you can glaze, but you just have to be aware that uh, it is 
still an open medium. And so uh, if you're just working immediately, even casein, when it dries, it does dry closed, but that's after a while. That's after a few hours or a day. It's not going to just dry and then it's immediately closed. So if you put down a layer of casein paint and then you try to uh, scumble or glaze on top of it, if you get to m noodling around in there very much, you'll start picking up the paint. And definitely with gouache, if you put down a layer of paint and you go scrubbing, scumbling, noodling around in any manner, you're going to be picking up the layers below it. That being said, however, you absolutely can glaze with um, gouache, um, yeah, with gouache, and uh, create some wonderful uh, transparent, translucent layering effects that you wouldn't normally be able to do. I don't personally care to use gouache by itself. I really like to mix it with watercolor and casein. Uh, that's just me. Uh, I find that if I mix gouache with those others, that it sort of tempers it a little bit and makes it where the color shift and value and, and value shift is not nearly so pronounced, and I can just get a better handle, better reading for the painting as it's going along. Uh, but you may differ. Uh, there are lots of people, James Gurney and many others, that uh, shoot. They take gouache and go straight in, and it doesn't seem to bother them at all. And gouache has been around for hundreds, you know, maybe many, many hundreds of years. And I'm not exactly sure how long, but I know it's been around for a long time. And so many artists have really loved it because it just added that opacity that you don't get with just straight watercolor. You can get textured effects with uh, gouache to some extent. You can lay down really heavy textures. The one caution you want to bear in mind is that gouache, just like casein, is a very, very brittle medium. So you absolutely cannot use it on canvas. You can uh, you really are restricted to using it on paper and the paper needs to be fairly stiff and if not mounted it just need you just need to be sure you're not going to go around bending it and twisting it in any manner because the surface of the paint the the film of paint is so brittle it will crack all over the place and uh, actually just flake off very easily. So uh, you, you can't be you can't be brutal with it. You got to be very ginger and uh, careful. Now of course that's if you're going opaque. If you're going using it almost like a transparent watercolor medium then it doesn't matter. All you've done is really stained the paper itself and it's embedded in the fibers of the paper so you're not going to hurt anything. But you know, if you start building up much uh, dimensionality, much texture at all, then you're really playing with something that can uh, uh, break on you very, very quickly and easily. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind that if you are going to go opaque with it and you're going to go thick in texture, that you want it to be a completely immobile surface. I don't remember the exact colors I used, but... Uh, for this, but as is typical on paintings, I always suggest that if you're going to have a full palette, uh, basically just have a warm and a cool of each color in the family, a warm blue and a cool blue, warm yellow, cool yellow, and a warm red and a cool red. Only add colors that you, at least at the beginning, only add colors that you can't mix like viridian, phthalo, uh, the quinacridones, you know, those are colors you just can't mix, uh, but I would avoid a lot of greens and uh, purples and oranges and reds that you, or not reds, but oranges and things like that that you can mix. 
just to make things simpler and not not as confusing and, and you're not hauling as much around oh one more thing i did want to say you will see a lot of gouache painters and they've got these trays that they've made that they're just dipping into and all their colors are nice and wet well just be sure that you've got a palette that is specifically designed for that because if you don't if you just make say a watercolor palette and you squeeze out your gouache and it's going to dry and get hard and sometimes they don't reconstitute as well as you'd like but also it just doesn't have that rich creamy buttery look and feel that the people you're watching are experiencing you've got to have a palette that once you put those colors down it's wet and it stays wet and it, and it never dries out so uh, you'll want to invest in one of those and just be aware you're going to have to every few days or so if you don't paint with it you're going to have to open it up squirt it with water to maintain that that uh, level of moisture and the last thing you'll have to make sure you do is that if you're not painting with it every day just be careful of mold because anything that gets wet and stays wet will sprout mold mold is everywhere i don't care how well you clean i don't care how fastidious you are there's mold in a dormant stage everywhere around you and on your person included and if you give it even the slightest bit of moisture and darkness it will grow that's what it does that's what it's waiting to do so uh, I've done that with my watercolors. I'd be out plein air painting and be plein air painting for weeks and then close up my palette. And for whatever reason, I had not let it dry out enough. Come back a week or two later when I'd been mostly studio painting, open it up and it's got mold in it. So it'll happen any anywhere there's water. So uh, this is good advice for you, even if you're doing watercolors. So... Uh, that's about it. I, I do want to encourage you just pay attention to a couple of areas where, especially when I redo the trees in the background, just completely repaint it. When you see me do that, you will see me hit that with a blow dryer and you will see just how stunning the shift in color and value uh, you will get if you get to if you start using gouache. Um, and like always, I tell people, it's not a question of right or wrong. It's what do you want to accomplish. And uh, there is a right and wrong. There absolutely is. But it's dependent. If you're trying to do a particular task, then uh, using a particular medium is not wrong. It's just different. But if you're trying to do some other task, well, then absolutely it could be wrong. And by example, if you want a wet and wet technique that's going to stay wet for days, well, gouache and watercolor are not the medium. That's wrong. If you want something that's going to dry instantaneously and dry closed where you don't have to worry about glazing, oils is not the right medium. That's incorrect. So uh, that's where I tell my students is that, yes, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things, but that right and wrong way is dependent upon what your ultimate goal is. So I guess that's about enough. You can sit and whatever time's left, enjoy the painting, and thanks for listening.
If you've enjoyed this episode of The Arthropologist, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, think about subscribing. I'm Bill Wilson, and I'm The Arthropologist.